Hello, thank you for visiting. In this video, I'm going to recommend seven Japanese fantasy books. I'm going to tell you the themes of the book, what the book is about, who might enjoy the book and who might not. I hope you enjoy. The first book I recommend is The Beast Prayer by Nahoko Uehashi, translated by Kathy Hirano. This is a YA high fantasy. The themes of the book include the pursuit of knowledge, coexistence between humans and wildlife, human greed for power and resources, and the desire to understand and control the natural world. This story is about Aileen, a girl who lives with her mother, a beast medic. One day, the water serpents mysteriously die, and her mother is sentenced to death as punishment. While Erin lives with a beekeeper, she discovers that she can communicate with majestic flying beasts. She decides to become the royal beast physician, but this puts her in a position to influence the fate of the kingdom. Next, I'm going to talk about who might enjoy this book and who might not. I recommend this book to people who like magical creatures or animals. The story explores the theme of wild animals and animals in captivity and the relationship between humans and animals. And if you like immersive world building, political intrigue, and the coming of the age narrative, this book might be for you. And I highly recommend this book to anyone who likes Ghibli or Ghibli films. However, this book might not be for you if you don't like slow pace, detail or building action fight scenes or political conflicts in fantasy. The second book is The Dear King by Nahoko Uehashi, translated by Kathy Hirano. This is adult high fantasy and medical fiction. The themes include colonialism and its environmental effects, family, life, spirituality and modern medicine, and the cycle of violence and prejudice. Van, a former soldier, is captured by the empire and enslaved in a salt mine. One day, he is attacked by a pack of mysterious black dogs, and the mysterious disease spreads. Van is the only survivor and finds a young girl on his way to escape, named Hayuna, and raises her. Meanwhile, Hosal, a young medical genius, tries to find Van to find a cure. I recommend this book to people who like found family trope, especially grandfather figures adopt children who end up softening their hearts type of found family story. And if you are interested in a medical fantasy adventure with science and politics, and are interested in reading about relationship between humans and nature, then this book might be for you. But if you don't like political conflicts in fantasy, heavy themes or complex world building, this book might not be for you. The next book I recommend is Moribito, Guardian of the Spirit by Nahoko Uehashi, translated by Kathy Hirano. This is a YA and children's high fantasy and action adventure. The themes are family and friendship, loyalty to promises made, society and borders, respect for living creatures, destiny, and politics and power. Bowser is a trained warrior and a wanderer. One day, she rescues a prince and is entrusted with Prince Chagum by the second queen. Bowser protects the boy who is on his quest to deliver the great egg of water spirit to its source in the sea. As they travel, they find themselves hunted by assassins sent by Chagum's father and monsters from the other world. I recommend this book to people who like interesting female character. Bowser is an interesting character. 
She is a warrior and a bodyguard who is strong, fierce, and incredibly skilled. And what I like about her is that she's also empathetic, brave, noble, and honest. And if you like Japanese mythology, rich and varied cultures, and the story that is set in a fantasy version of historical Asia, then this book might be for you. However, if you don't like political conflicts in fantasy, action filled plot, and a story that is set in a complex fantasy world, then this might not be for you. The next book I recommend is Dragon Sword and Wind Child by Noriko Ogiwara, translated by Cassie Hirano. This is YA fantasy romance and a Japanese mythology inspired story. The themes are immortality, conflict and duality, destiny and personal choice, and how light and dark are not equivalent to good and evil. The story is set in ancient Japan, where gods walked the earth, and the forces of the god of light and the goddess of darkness have waged war for generations. Saya, a girl who loves the light, finds out she is the reincarnation of the water maiden and the princess of the children of the dark. She is the only mortal who can awaken the legendary dragon sword to end the war, and now she has to choose between the light and dark. I recommend this book to people who are interested in Japanese mythology and Kojiki. Kojiki is Japan's oldest surviving historical record and was completed in 712. And it is a book about Shinto rituals, prayer practices, and um, customs of ancient Japan. And so if you like the mythology world or are interested in Japanese ancient world, I recommend this book. And this book also has a paranormal romance with an immortal, and the romance is very sweet. But the romance is a um, subplot, so the romance is not the main point, ne, the main plot. And um, because this book is inspired by Japanese mythology, and if you're not familiar with Japanese mythology, it might be difficult to read. It's not too complicated, and the author briefly explains the, um, the necessary information, and the writing is accessible, but it might be um, difficult for some people. And it is a fast-paced story, so if you prefer a slower-paced book, this might not be for you. Also, the story reads like a fairy tale, so the characters might feel distant. If you are a character-driven reader, then it might not be for you. The next book I recommend is Night on the Milky Way Railroad by Kenji Miyazawa, translated by Shelley Marshall. This is a classic fantasy novel and children's literature. The themes are the meaning of life, the meaning of happiness, life and death, death and reincarnation, regret, self-sacrifice, and friendship. The story is about two boys, Giovanni and Campanella. One day, Giovanni finds himself on a train with Campanella, and the train takes them on a journey through galaxy. The two boys see beautiful scenery and meet people on the train. They talk about the meaning of happiness along the way. I recommend this book to people who like magical and dreamy stories with poetic writing and bittersweet tones. This is a short story that deals with philosophical themes such as the meaning of life, what true happiness is, and death. And if you like The Little Prince, I think you like this story too. And if that doesn't sound interesting, then 
this book might not be for you. Okay,、um, the next book is Brave Story by Miyuki Miyabe and translated by Alexander O. Smith. This is middle grade fantasy and an adventure and coming of age story. The themes are family and broken home, coping with emotional trauma, changing a destiny, acknowledging and accepting the darker part of yourself. Accepting the reality and moving on, and friendship. The story is about Wataru, an ordinary fifth grader who loves video games. One day, his parents unexpectedly get divorced, and to change his life, he sets off on a journey to the magical world of vision, a land filled with creatures both fierce and friendly. I recommend this book to people who like role playing games. The story goes on like a video game, where a protagonist interacts with other characters who have backstories and existing motivations, and completes side quests and acts for a larger story arc. And if you like a shonen manga type of character who goes through a tough challenge, Questions his life and moral values, but tries to do what he thinks is right. Then this book might be for you. And just like many shonen manga, this book also has a great character development. Although I believe anyone can enjoy children's literature regardless of age, some people might feel this book is too childish. And I don't recommend this book to people who don't like a predictable plotline. The last book I recommend is The Night is Short, Bogon Girl by Tomihiko Morimi, translated by Emily Baristorelli. This is a fantasy romance, magical realism, and comedy. The themes include life is short, what it means to be young. Taking opportunities and the power of imagination. Senpai, a college student who is in love with a black haired girl, carries out a strategy to catch her eye as much as possible. He tries his best to get close to her downtown in spring, at the used book fair in summer, and at the school festival in fall, but he keeps failing in his attempts. The mysterious night goes on, and they get caught up in a series of unusual incidents involving unique friends in the city of Kyoto. I recommend this book to people who like humorous and serious and、um, absurd story about college life. The characters are college students, so they do many stupid things like drinking contest. Spicy food eating competition and playing culture of Monte Cristo out of the blue at the school festival. And the story is set in Kyoto, so if you want to read a book that is set in Kyoto, I recommend this book. However, the sense of humor is not for everybody. The humor is whimsical and very silly, so it might not be for you. And very strange things happen without any explanation. If you like magic system and magic world that makes sense, then this is not for you. Also, this book has some dirty jokes, so if you don't like that, then this is not for you. And this is categorized as a fantasy romance, but it might not be a fantasy romance that you expect. If you like, if you expect this kind of fantasy romance, then this book might not be for you. It's more like this kind of fantasy romance.、Um, this college boy tries to get this girl's affection by meeting her by chance, but this girl is very oblivious and she just she just keeps enjoying her life. And these are illustrations by Yusuke Nakamura, and there's. 
an anime adaptation of this book. So if you're interested, then you can also watch the anime. And that is all for now. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.